I'm Luisa Maffi, the co-founder and director of Terra Lingua. Uh, Terra Lingua is an organization that um, was created uh, 15 years ago around the idea of biocultural diversity. Biocultural diversity, as we think of it, is the uh, true web of life. People generally, when they, when they hear the web of life, think of biodiversity, the diversity of plants and animal species, the ecosystems. Uh, but um, we think that there is a, an inextricable link between people and the environment. And that's what we call biocultural diversity. It's the diversity of life in nature and culture. And uh, we have worked with this idea for, uh, for these 15 years, um, and bringing it from a completely uh, obscure uh, uh, idea to an idea that is being taken up uh, now in international policy. And uh, recently we uh, published a book called Biocultural Diversity Conservation, a global source book. Uh, and, and this is the book, um, in, in which we decided to um, make the lessons that we have learned about uh, biocultural diversity more widely available. There are uh, many efforts uh, around the world to uh, uh, maintain and restore the diversity of life in nature and culture, but uh, they are isolated from one another, and uh, people don't have a way to uh, find out about them or learn from them, and so that's what we did in this book. We um, selected and uh, uh, described 50, uh, 45 uh, projects from all continents uh, that take this uh, integrated uh, biocultural approach uh, to conservation. And what do we mean by this? Um, you have heard about many uh, thousands of projects to conserve biodiversity, but often they don't take into account uh, the relationships between people and uh, biodiversity uh, at the local level, the ways in, in which over hundreds, often, often thousands of years, uh, people have um, acquired uh, in-depth knowledge uh, about plant and animal species um, and uh, th they have used and managed local environments in ways that have often been sustainable over uh, long, long periods of time. And uh, all of this uh, cultural diversity, diversity of cultural knowledge um, often expressed in, in local languages is being threatened by globalization in the same way that uh, biodiversity is being threatened by it. And so um, the efforts that we like to uh, support and that this book describes are efforts in which uh, um, cultural traditions, local languages uh, are um, conserved or really uh, uh, enhanced by, uh, by eff local efforts to, uh, uh, to, to um, maintain and revitalize the link between people and the environment. And we, we have lots of really interesting and, and fascinating examples. One of my favorites, for instance, is uh, um, the people of the Andaman Islands, a, a small archipelago um, a, that is part of India in the, in the uh, Indian Ocean. Uh, in 2004, uh, that part of the world um, was uh, the victim of a tremendous tsunami uh, that wiped out uh, coastal communities all over the region. And uh, the researchers who were working with uh, the last remaining speakers of the great Andamanese languages were sure that those uh, remaining speakers had been wiped out. And instead, when they were able to get in there, um, they found out that everybody was doing just fine. And why was that? Uh, because the elders in the community uh, still knew from uh, their ancestors uh, the signs of uh, an incoming tsunami. And they were able to uh, advise uh, the rest of the population to run for the hills. And uh, if that knowledge had been wiped out uh, before the tsunami, by, by the, the uh, social and, and economic changes that, that are uh, changing this cultural diversity around the world, the people would have perished. And we have so many examples of this, food security uh, related to traditional uh, agricultural crops, um, and uh, land management, uh, traditional land management in, in, in many parts of the world that has been sustainable. All these case studies are described in this book and uh, we draw the lessons and make recommendations for policy, uh, research and, and education and especially uh, we care about education, education not only of the mind but education of the heart and the spirit so that uh, protecting the true web of life, biocultural diversity will be um, will become a foremost societal goal. I was struck in reading a book by the great variety and very interesting 
cases of how people have been molded by the environment and, yeah. and even vice versa. And I think you've made the point that this is a great insurance policy in time of great change for humankind. Absolutely. And uh, climate change is the next threat that's coming upon uh, indigenous and local communities around the world. And uh, uh, years ago, maybe even 10 years ago already, uh, Arctic peoples were trying to talk to the scientists and tell them, things are changing here. You, you need to look into this. Uh, our our um, the, the ways in which we used to, to, to hunt uh, are changing the, because the animals' uh, behavior is, is changing, uh, the ice is changing, and uh, um, interestingly enough, it took uh, at least a decade for, for scientists to begin to really listen. And um, there are so many other things that we can learn from, uh, from indigenous peoples because uh, of the intimate and direct connection that uh, they have had with the local environment for, for hundreds or thousands of years. We have forgotten about those links and we need to begin to remember.